So knowing you're a commercial banker, you can get a lot more customized uh, answer solutions and sometimes outside the box uh, advice. And that's kind of where knowing your commercial banker can co really come into handy. Yeah, it kind of sounds like if you if you know your banker well, then they can more guide you into solutions that maybe you need and maybe not the bank needs, so to speak. Correct. They're they're more willing to think long term. Uh, quite a few times, uh, someone has come to me about something, and I said, "Hey, that's not a good fit at our bank, but let me call around. Let me see. I think you're you're bankable somewhere else." And so I'll go find a solution for them that's not within inside my bank. And that's a great answer for them. That way they know that they can still grow their business, they can do that. But if they went to three or four other big banks and they all got told no, they would assume that they can be banked anywhere. Whereas I know kind of what questions to ask, which kind of shorthand to kind of um, jump through the hoops, and I can do that for them. So those are things that um, knowing your commercial banker can really help out. No, that's good. And it sounds, it sounds like as opposed to just being a number that you build, a relationship and that's that's why I always feel comfortable you know sending clients and and people I know your way because I know that you're not going to just shove them into a product that they don't need for you to for you to make money you're Correct. you care about the relationship similar to to us you know we just don't want to have a client for a month we want to have clients you know for years down the road and sometimes you know, it's not a fit up front, mm -hmm. and it's and it's good to be able to refer to someone that's not going to just again look to for a transaction mm -hmm. um, because it's going to pay you back in the future. I've always appreciated that um, with your integrity. Um, so when it comes to you know, as you know, most of my clients are in the construction uh, industry. Mm -hmm. So you know, roofers, landscapers, plumbers, those kind of guys. What are some of the products that help? them the most that you're seeing? What kind of trends are you seeing? Is it, uh, is it uh, commercial property? Is it equipment? Like what, what are some of the things they would be coming to you for? Yeah. So in the beginning, they're really going to focus on equipment loans. Um, you know, get that new truck, that new drill, those type of things that are um, going to be the kind of the basic steps. Uh, the nice thing for the bank is that it has collateral. And so there's always risk in some, giving someone their first loan. There's more concern about that. We don't have any history. Banks are very you know, established, they like to see other things that are established. And so someone comes in looking for their first loan, what can we do to make them have a comfort level that's not um, with, with lending history? So good credit scores are great, uh, good liquidity is great, and then collateral. So if you're buying a piece of equipment, that's always um, a great place to start. Once you've gotten that, then usually they're gonna look at a line of credit. So now my business is starting to grow, uh, I'm getting larger uh, deals, I've got more accounts receivable. But sometimes I can't do that next deal. I can't pay for the equipment. I can't pay my people until the accounts receivable comes in. And so that's where line of credit can really help businesses grow. Uh, the SBA has said that, you know, when they did a, um, a breakdown of businesses that failed, majority of businesses uh, didn't fail because they couldn't, they weren't good roofers, they didn't do good work. Majority of them failed because of cash flow. Gotcha. No, and that makes a lot of sense, especially in construction, because a lot of the times these guys are doing a lot of work up front and then they're having to rely on accounts receivable. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes those processes aren't um, put into place, or sometimes homeowners are slow or insurance companies are slow mm -hmm. to pay. So it is good to rely on that uh, steady cash flow of, of say, a, a, a line of credit. Um, what, do you, what kind of things are you seeing with more established companies? Uh, mo most of our clients, they're you know, two million, five million above, so they're doing well. They're mm -hmm. just looking to make that next leap so would that be more um uh, commercial space do you do commercial lending for uh, actual um what am i trying to say retail space or, or space for them to, to house their equipment and their team and all that kind of stuff correct and that's lots of times that's when businesses kind of take that next big jump they've been leasing space for a while three year five release or whatever and that's when they're referred to me and they're starting to look at okay i'm used to paying five thousand a month to lease my space how much would that give me as a building so now they know, okay, look, I can go buy a 750K building and essentially I'm only gonna go from a 5,000 lease to a $6,000 loan payment, for example. So those type of things, they can kind of help plan. And then you, you, whenever you talk to a business owner and you ask them, in 20 years from now, would, would you wanna sell the business and you wanna sell a multiple of your net income or do you wanna sell for multiple net income and also have the choice <clears throat> of being a landlord or selling the building as well? And when you look at those, you look at, you know, projections for 20 years in DFW, so you're buying a million dollar building right now, the projections in 20 years, you know, what is that building going to be worth? 
most people will conservatively say $2 million. So if you can lock in your lease payment into a loan payment, and then on top of that have that equity at the end, you have a very successful retirement plan. I love that. And I, I love a couple of things about that. Number one, it's I think it's really efficient for a business of that size, you know, you know, again, take a roofing company, they can have all of their equipment, all of their, um, you know, the, the, the supplies and house their team, you know, whether it's office managers and, and things of that nature, sales reps in one good location mm -hmm. and they can go out and do their jobs and do everything they need to do right there um, in house. And the other part that I love about your answer is that, again, I love that you take the time to talk strategy long term mm -hmm. and not just be an order taker of you know here's this like let's look at what this forecast is one of the, the questions that i asked you know potential clients right off the bat what does this look like down the road like mm -hmm. where are we trying to go yes um and i've always appreciated that about the level of service that you give is it's not just this transaction where does it what does this look like five years from mm -hmm. now ten years from now so that's great so let's say that uh, we have a uh, a listener out there who is there they are growing they're looking for either you know line of credit they want to talk to you about you know a building equipment loan these types of things what kinds of things do they need to have together before they call you because i'm sure that there's some kind of underwriting that mm -hmm. goes on they can't just call and say hey give me money and you're like yeah cool right um what to to be to help help them help you what kind of things would they need to have together to kind of get these processes going? Well, like I mentioned, you know, banks want to see process. They want to see history. So we want to see uh, three years of tax returns uh, on the business. And then we want to see the most current years profit and loss and balance sheet, most current uh, months of p and uh, balance sheet. And on the personal side, same thing. We want to see our last three years of personal tax returns. And then instead of a, a profit and loss and balance sheet, we want to see a personal financial statement. And essentially just list your assets kind of how you've accumulated, what have you done with your money uh, throughout the years. So some people are very liquid, they like to have it in the stock market, uh, you know, even um, crypto, things like that. Other people have invested more in property, rental houses, things. But we want to kind of see what you've done with your money and where it is. So that's that kind of important first step. And then we also want to see uh, information about what you're wanting to do. So for example, yeah, I am looking to buy a million dollar building and I'm going to have house all of my uh, trucks there, my people there. Give us a short business plan. The more money that you're looking for, the more detail we're going to want. But lots of times I can get started with something as simple as a few paragraphs for something, you know, 250 to 500K. If it's a million or more, I'm probably going to want at least a page. And if we're looking at a multi million dollar deal, we're probably going to want a, a short business plan, something maybe three to five pages. Okay. That's, that seems pretty fair. And I'm, and I'm sure that most business owners understand they are going to have to come up with, with those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. um, do you think it would be beneficial for them to meet with you first? You kind of go over their goals and then you say, okay, based on what you're saying, here's some recommendations and the, this is kind of what I need from you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my general process is when people re get referred to me, it's all just have a conversation. Say, Mara, when's a good time to talk? I'll kind of explain the process, um, answer all their questions. If they've got a spouse, a business partner, try to get everybody on the same page at the same time. And then I'll send a, a you know a, an email kind of summarizing what we talked about, asking for the documents, and then if there's any questions from there. But that'll kind of get us our initial underwriting. I'll work with an underwriter to kind of tell a story. And I tell people lots of times, that's what my job is. I like to connect people, but really I'm a storyteller. I take all your numbers and I put details behind them to convince somebody. And I don't work, it's not a black and white industry. And in the, in the beginning, I used to think, oh, I can just look at these documents and say, yes or no, Mario's gonna get approved. But now I found out there are so many, there are so many one-off scenarios. Um, I had a guy that I, I looked at and it was a deal at um, the bank where I currently am. And I, I said, man, this is a slam dunk deal. This is gonna put me on the map. This is a great you know, $6 million loan. <clears throat> we went through the process, got assigned to an underwriter. And about mm, a, ba a day or two later, an underwriter says, have you Googled his name? And I was like, you know, I normally don't, but let me go ahead. So I Googled his name. Uh, he was in three pending lawsuits. And I said, oh my gosh, well, we're probably not going to do a $6 million loan for somebody in, in lawsuits. And that was kind of one of those things. So sometimes the deals will look great on paper, but there's one thing that'll cancel it. And so I'll just vice versa, I've had some deals where the people are, you know, 
black. It's, it's sometimes it's black, sometimes it's white, and it's, a lot of them are gray. I looked at a gray one, but the, the customer had banked with us for many years. He had been uh, in McKinney for many years. Um, he had referred many of his uh, children to the bank with us, and a lot of those um, stability factors kind of helped uh, push him over the edge to get approved and get a, a rate that he was really pleased with. No, that, that's amazing, and it goes back to kind of our, our first topic of the importance of having that relationship with your banker uh, to be able to go to bat for you and kind of manually underwrite some things, if mm -hmm. you will, or at least go to bat. Mm -hmm. You know, tell the, tell the full you. story. Exactly. Mm -hmm. tell, tell, the, tell the full story. I love that. Um, what, is, what is something that we did not cover that you would like the audience to know about either yourself or just commercial banking in, in, in general to make sure that they don't make you know, mistakes that other people might make? I've told a lot of people um, when we start having conversations and I ask a lot more questions than other bankers do, they're like, why do you need to know all this information? And honestly, I don't need to know it. It's really for you, for their benefit. Um, I've had people do everything from use my bank to do interviews. Um, I've, ha I've connected people to uh, industries. But I tell them quite often, I said, the bank benefits from you doing well. So other than your friends and family, the bank is, has the most invested in you succeeding. I said, so go to us, use us as a resource. Um, I, I've talked about connections all the time. I had a guy come in on his phone and he was visibly upset. He was just kind of uh, shaking his head. He was on his cell phone. He was very frustrated and had nothing to do with the bank. So I went and asked him, I said, you know, what's going on? He says, I've got 10,000 pounds of meat and I had a buyer back out on me. And he says, and I've got literally two days to get rid of this stuff or I'm just eating a huge loss. He says, you don't happen to know a, a restaurant owner who needs high-end meat, do you? And I'm like, I know three. Who do you? And so he sat in my office. We talked about it. He called two of them, and the second one ended up buying it all. So he, he's just like, he said, I never thought to use my bank for connections. And that was early in my career. And so me helping him helped me kind of build that habit in my mind as well. No, that's that's amazing. And that's, that's one thing that you know, you're a great resource because you do talk to so many different people types of people that you've always been a great connector uh, because you you're a great networker and you know just a lot of people just from what you do so that's that's outstanding okay so if I'm a construction company and I'm listening to this I'm like yeah I need to go ahead and you know make the switch I'm looking for you know a loan line of credit what's the best way to get a hold of you to set that meeting up so I am one of those bankers I prefer to give out my cell phone uh, one of my best abilities is to be accessible whether it's the business owner, a partner, a spouse, I give them my cell phone. So David Ng, uh, last name is E-N-G-H, and my cell phone is 469-878-5830. And I welcome all text and calls. Um, they can call me, text me anytime. I'm happy to help them. Excellent, excellent. Well, um, we'll, be in, we'll be sure to include that in the show notes as well. And thank you so much for coming on the show, David. Awesome. Appreciate you, Mario. You bet.